a look at each of these three distinguished individuals. Let's take a look at their background and what they bring to the table. The Cavo administration will be the fourth consecutive gubernatorial cabinet Joe Cameron will serve in. He served as director of the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse for Governor Joe Atta, the director of the Department of Vocational Rehab for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, designated state health official, which is a quite long term, and the Social Security Administration Disability Determination Services Program Manager in the following administrations and director for Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. He was also the acting president of the Department of Chamorro Affairs and Emergency Support Function Lead for Mass Care and Medical Sheltering for Guam Homeland Security for Governor Felix Camacho. He's fluent in Guam's native tongue, both reading, writing, and speaking, all three of them. He's got a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology from Sacred Heart College and Belmont Abbey College. Now, speaking of Kathy Gogui, she is Principal and Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Greenlight Media Productions. It's a sales, marketing, and advertising firm created by her and her partners about two years ago. Prior to that, Kathy was Assistant Director of Communications and Promotions at GCC. She was also Senior Marketing Officer for the Korean Market at GVB. She holds a bachelor's degree in communication from the University of Hawaii and has a master's in business administration from the University of Guam. Now finally, appointed by Governor Eddie Calvo to serve as administrator of the Guam EPA, Ivan Kanata. He was the chief engineer of the Guam EPA's water division. He previously served as the AB Wanpat International Airport Authority as that agency's chief engineer. He also holds jobs, held jobs I should say, in the private sector for many years doing engineering work. Now before returning to the island, he worked in Missouri for 21 years for that state's government's Department of Conservation as a project engineer. He holds an Associates of Engineering degree from St. Gregory's College and a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering degree from the University of Oklahoma. Go Sooners! He's a professional engineer in the field of electrical engineering. Thank you so much, Kathy, Ivan, and Joe, for being here. And, uh, you know, your football team's doing very, very well. Yes, they well. <laughs> <laughs> they're, ranked, they're ranked number one in the uh, nation for, for next year, by the way. Well, thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, and Joe, of course, returns to the set here at our hallowed Harmon Halls. He, of course, was with uh, Jess Luhan on The Buzz a few days ago, so we appreciate you coming back. Thank you. Okay, so now, everybody, your accomplishments are certainly noted, both in those bios and what you've done in the private and public sectors and everything. Uh, maybe beyond that, and we'll start with Kathy and then work down the line and everything, um, what about your experiences and what do you bring to the table in Governor Calvo's administration and tying into his plans? Fortunate for me, I've been in the service industry. I was at the Visitors Bureau for 13 years and then at the community college. And so we, we, need, we have that where we need to serve the public. You know, and we know who our, our audiences are. And so that's what we bring. And so when I came into PBS, I went and met with all of my staff and I had suggested, or we were talking about what is it that we, what, what, what the governor, let me step back a bit. He told us that when we started our jobs, we were supposed to go back to our mandate and see why, what, what, what are we supposed to provide the public and make sure that we do the best that we can in, in working with the general public and, and make sure that we live up to our mandate and that we serve the community well. So I went back and I looked at our mandate for PBS and I met with each one of our staff members, our team at PBS, and I said, okay, this is what we're supposed to do. And they, most of them have been there for 20 plus years, which is really nice, right? Sure. I've got a really seasoned staff. And so I said, we're gonna do the best that we can to provide public TV public television for our community. So knowing that I've come from a heavy service industry background, I think that that's some of the things that, that when if somebody comes into our station, they're gonna feel that they're welcomed and, and that we wanna help serve the community. Well, okay. Kathy, you and I are right there. Watch more TV, everybody. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's the order of the day. <laughs> absolutely. And watch more, watch more PBS, you know. Absolutely, you're, educational out, TV. Outstanding programs yeah. on, on your channel. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Ivan, uh, you come from a very specific technical background and you've, yes, you're, I did. you've got experiences yes, and I did. you're now chosen to lead a very specific technical agency. Yes. Uh, how will you seamlessly marry those two disciplines? Well, essentially the, uh, because of the mandates of Guam EPA, uh, both locally and federally, uh, it, it really involves a lot of technical uh, areas and I bring that to the table as being my background uh, in the technical area. I also bring a lot of management experience to my background, uh, being mostly a manager in my career, uh, managing multidiscipline engineering uh, programs and projects, you know, and, and, and uh, also managing a lot of construction work 
um, construction management type work with project costs, you know, all the way from the airports, which is anywhere up in the 80 to, to 120 million dollar sure. projects. So I bring that to the table as my background experience. Um, when you're managing construction work and, and other programs like that, of course, you deal with a lot of people. And you deal with people that have the same background and understand the same uh, problem and potential problem areas. So we were able to communicate. Uh, the background of Guam EPA, the staffing at Guam EPA are all technically oriented. So I will be able to communicate with them mm -hmm. without really much um, issues or, or really an outsider looking in so much as I am a part of that team. I was a part of that team before I came on board. Absolutely. So you're not just a bureaucrat in a suit that the governor just handpicked and said, okay, he's dropping you in there and now go. Well, that, you can actually that's re right. You can relate yes. to the rank and file on their level dealing yes, with the, the idiosyncrasies of their, yes, their jobs. of course. Okay, well, we'll talk to you about, about that, especially with dealing with uh, Uncle Sam in a little bit. But uh, Joe, your relationship with this administration and with this government is pretty unique because of your background, the fact that you've done a lot of the work already. So how do you build upon not only your own portfolio, but the uh, situation that the Department of Tomorrow Affairs faces itself in with the budget being what it is. I think, I think one of the things that uh, Governor Eddie Calvo and Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio's marching orders to me was that, Joseph, we're going to put more on your plate. Uh, the Transition Subcommittee on Culture and Tourism has indicated that there's a need to marry entities such as Sakatnia Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, which I was the executive director for, and soon to unveil the master plan for Hagatnia's land use, and uh, that should be forthcoming very soon, as well uh, as the CAHA, the Council of the Arts and Humanities, is now under my direct administrative supervision. Now, marrying that with the culture, and, and an integral part of that also would be a more tacit communication with the Guam Visitors Bureau in their branding of the Chamorro brand to our visitors. And I take lead and, and, and pleasure that I was actually reared by my grandmother, Rita Calvo Artero. And Guahu Natauto, Angin Manasuzo, Anidi Patgunzo, Hinasun Samoru, Pesani Muskwekwilazo, Kadai, Hava Lekna Gifne English, Isaina, Leku Kiki, Comprending Hava Tsukumiki, Lekna Gifne Samoru. How do I translate? Because I thought tomorrow, I didn't really think English. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that really excites me more than anything else is I'm asking for the elders of Guam. The market, that market concept at the Chamorro village is Sengsum Tsamoru, needs to come to life again. And uh, I have started unveiling this morning opportunities and the task chair for that would be Ben Meno from uh, in Alahan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Lola Nelson said to me yesterday, she says, Joseph, I like what you said with Jess Luhan, but that's a lot of words. You gotta put some action. I ask the general public who has an interest in this culture, bring it to the table, let's talk about it. It's been a sleeping giant for years, and I'm very excited about it. All right, well, Kathy, Ivan, and Joe, thanks so much for your input, and stay tuned and stay put, everybody out there, because we will get to the meat and potatoes of our discussion, find out what these people have in store for your government when KUM News Extra continues. Right